What's up, everybody? Mark Harwood here. Another episode of the Fearless Influencer Podcast. And this is a super special episode because I've got my good friend and home business phenom legend, whatever you want to call this. Phenom. He, oh. Yeah, I know, right? Oh. But he's a really good friend of mine, too. I, I love this guy. I love him and his wife. They're amazing people. I'm so excited to have you, Doug Fireball. Thanks for having me. Yeah. It's, it's been. Went out to dinner last night. It yeah. was epic. Yeah. <laughs> it was epic. We had a great time. And, uh, but, uh, I, I've been excited to do this for a while. I know we've been talking about getting together and, uh, you know, the fact that we live right off the freeway, you're able to come right by and see it. Good stuff. So, so I, I'm super excited. We're going to dive into some really cool stuff today because if you don't know Doug, you should know Doug. Um, I'll tell you a little story before we get started, but, um, I got started in network marketing back in the early 2000s and uh, probably around 2008, I was in a company and I got involved with a company that uh, did a lot of training. And my very first introduction to Doug was listening to his training and going through his training. And it really helped me so much. And I just remember listening to him thinking, who is this guy? He has a crazy <laughs> amount of energy and uh, I love what he shared. So his training early on affected me before I even knew him. And so the fact that we've gotten to know each other, but our faith has been one thing that's really been a huge part that's Amen. connected us and we had something in common. So I definitely want to get into this, but if you don't know, Doug, one of the things about him is you've been around the industry now for like close to 40 years, right? 37, yeah. 37 years. And, um, you know, some of the stats Doug has, first off, I just want you to know, he'll never talk about himself. Okay. He, he he's not that kind of guy. He actually loves promoting others, which is such a which is such a great thing. Um, he's not about you know making himself first. He's about putting others first and really lifting up people. But I you know was looking into his stats and Doug, you mentored I think fifty eight number one earners in companies. Correct. Think about that for a second. You've worked with over a hundred and fifty plus teams in the network marketing direct sales industry, right? And Okay, correct me if I'm wrong. Over nine billion with a B in volume and your We we what, catalyze that with our companies, correct? Yeah. That's crazy. So I want you to know what you're about to hear today is from somebody who's done the deal. Okay. And that's yeah, see he's pointing to the the real CEO. But but Doug has been an incredible vessel to really um do some amazing things. So I'm excited to hear from him. All right, Doug. Yes. Let's get into this. Let's have fun. This is, uh, you know, we're going to have some I wish fun I could here. grow a beard like that. Yeah, if you want. That, that, I just can't do it. it I'll teach you. Good. I'll teach you. <laughs> <laughs> I think you're getting easy. jealous about it, man. Let me show you how to color it like I color mine too. Or it's still it looks good. a little white. But I think that's salt and pepper. So that's what I go. So, Doug, what's your story, man? How did you get started in entrepreneurship? Like, what was the. I was living in Virginia, Roanoke, where I was born. And we were, there's a place called the Roanoke Athletic Club. And I was working for uh, my uncle right out of school and college. And um, to make a long story short, I was working out and, and we were, I was getting ready to take a shower and stuff. And a guy said, hey, let me ask you a question. What do you do for a living? And I said, well, I'm, I'm in sales, marketing, blah, blah, blah. I was like 24, something like that. And he said, uh, do you have a VHS player? I said, yeah, I got a VHS player. He says, here, watch this. So when I watched it uh, that evening, I was like, oh, no. Oh, no, 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 no. That's not anything that I would want to do. But the Lord had different plans. So the next morning, uh, we were back in, it's about 5, 36 a.m. in the morning. And I had some questions. And he says, why don't you come to a meeting? I said, well, what kind of meeting? I said, this is like 86, mid-86, wow. late 86. And he said, what kind of meeting? I said, it's just got some people from Virginia Beach coming up. He said, I'd like you to meet them. Well, I'm into meeting new people, sure. So I showed up at Saturday morning, and there they were. They were talking about this new company and, and, and this, this great system of filtration of water and everything else. And, and I said, wait a minute, this isn't at all what I thought it was. And, from, and suddenly it just connected, it clicked. Yeah. 
I got involved, uh, and we we built a huge organization. Yeah, you 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 said that it clicked. Like, what what mm -hmm. was there anything specific about like the industry itself? Network marketing, direct sales. Really I love the fact that you're working for yourself, but not by yourself. That really, really, really caught me. Yeah. I said, wow. Because I thought about real estate, thought about insurance, and this was kind of sort of like it. But I like the idea of having a team, building community, yeah. and having uh, having a support system. Yeah. Even though I was green as grass, I had yeah. not a clue what, what I was doing. Yeah. But that's what I liked the most about it. That. For me too, like I've always loved that part of network marketing is the community. Mm -hmm. it's, it's tight, like, you know, there's there's so many, I, I the amount of people that I've met in this, you know, profession has been incredible. Like you just, the, the people, everybody really devoted to like the same, mm -hmm. you know, um, I, ideal of, of helping each other succeed. I think that's what's super cool about it. So, um, so, you know, getting started and then kind of coming up through the ranks and, and things like that, um, you know, and as you, what was it like early on for you? Because I know like when people, it, it doesn't even have to be like a network marketing company or whatever. It could be any business venture whatsoever. Because mm -hmm. I know there's people that are going to be watching this who probably aren't in network marketing, but I'm sure everything was super peachy for you in the beginning. Like it was super smooth and, and uh, I'm being, of course, you know what K Row here. syrup is? What is it? You know what K Row syrup is, no. right? No. K Row syrup is like a very thick pancake syrup. Yeah. <laughs> it was like being waist deep in a very thick yeah. pancake syrup. It was tough. <laughs> it was not easy. Yeah, and and so and and I want to talk about this because I think a lot of people when they when they you know think of a, a business like it's just going to be this cakewalk, and I I can tell you firsthand that's not the case, and I know you know that doing. Mm -hmm. A lot, and you've helped other people work through that. So, mm -hmm. like, what what was it for you? And then, how did you like really figure I out how my, to help others? Through? That's a great question, Mark. Because yeah. I asked my mentor one day at, at, when it was during a summit he did in Memphis, Tennessee, and I asked him. I don't know why everybody was under Ben, and I and he asked me to breakfast one morning, and I just asked him. I was really struggling. Yeah, I mean, I was struggling, and I said. Ben, what's the secret to this business? I mean, I know you got to talk with people, do this, do that, all this. Yeah. What is the real secret? Without even looking up from his oatmeal, he just said, patient. He said, most people impatient themselves right out of this business. Yeah. He says, you don't understand that one person that you could bring in and together jointly, there's a chemistry, literally, that can explode your business. And that's what happened to me. That one person showed up and jointly together, one plus one was equal to like a thousand. Yeah. And it just, it just took off. Yeah. It's funny you say that too, because one of the things that I teach my students a lot of times, because mm -hmm. I, you know, you know, you know me, I'm, I'm a heavy internet marketer. I love mm -hmm. internet marketing. Yep. And, you know, there's You're a little, great at it. And there's a little bit of the tech side that comes along with that. Mm -hmm. And so, By the way, yeah, this dude is coaching Jody and me about video marketing, just FYI. That to me is still like, I, I love being able to help you guys and you guys that amazing. But one of the things that I, I teach um, my students, because there's a little bit of the tech side to things. Mm -hmm. And one of the excuses I hear all the time is, oh, I'm just not, I'm just not tech. And I, and I usually stop people and I say, okay, that's not the problem. Mm -hmm. It's patience. That's the problem. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of people it's not that they can't learn something. It's that you need to have the patience to learn it. And so that is a big word for me is the patience thing, because it, it's, we all, we're in that microwave society a lot of times, and we want it now. We want it quick. We want it fast. We want it as quick as we can get it. And patience is so key. You got to develop what I call urgent patience. Yeah. You got to have a sense of urgency and it's something that, that you got to move. You got to do what you need to do. But at the same point, you, you have to step back sometimes and just let it flow, just let it happen because every consequence has some type of reaction. Yeah. And you have to learn what to do, how to say it. You have to learn the system. You have to trust the process. Yeah. All the, the trite things that people say. Yeah. But the challenge is, is back when, when I was building, it was, it was a very micro focus. Yeah. I mean, you were so focused on doing what needed to be done. You didn't even mention, you didn't, didn't even think anything except you went and did it. Yeah. Here it's microwave. 
Yeah. Everybody wants it in 15 minutes and preferably 10, 10 minutes if, if, we, if it can happen that way. Yeah. And you don't endure what needs to endure because it's called from point A to point B is where most people want to go. Yeah. But there's a messy middle. Yeah. And this messy middle is messy. I don't care if you're in real estate. I don't care if you're, if you're an entrepreneur in restaurant. I don't care what it is. There is a messy middle that you have to figure it out. Yeah. And no matter how many courses, no matter how many times that you go to webinars, seminars, learn and all this other stuff, if you don't make it through the messy middle, and that's the only difference between seven, eight, nine figure producers yeah, and then regular people mm. is they made it through the middle and decided that they just wanted to take it. And from that point sore. Yeah. And that's why that many people, they give up right in the middle of the struggle. Yeah. They just walk away. Yeah. And I, I find that to be the, the most tragic thing because the truth is, I mean, you know, my wife will tell you, we've all been through it that have had some level of success mm -hmm. in anything. It is hard. Like when you're going through it, the, the, the hard part is not necessarily the work, it's the personal growth. That's, that's kind of the, the, the part that really matters is going through that, understanding that your journey is, you know, uh, a big deal. And I think some people struggle with it. I think that a lot of people don't understand that from point A to point B, there are certain mile markers that you have to cross. Yeah. It's just like if going from Dallas, Texas to New York. Yeah. There are certain mile markers you have to cross. You have yeah. to cross these mile markers. Otherwise, you're not going to get to New York. It's the same thing here. There are certain mile markers that you have to cross. And if you, if you don't cross them, yeah. you'll never end up at the destination. Yeah. And that's the challenge a lot of people have because they want to go to point A to point B and just it'd be simple, easy, quick. Yeah. I wish that's the way it was. I wish God set it up where it was like, <laughs> we just like lay our head on a book and it fuses in the head. But that's the greatest point. reason why we go through the messy middle is because it builds us. Yeah. It develops your skill set. It, it develops your mental set. It develops yeah. your action set. And all of this works really well within what we're doing yeah. as far as the business itself. Well, that's the thing. Like if you don't go through any of that, you're never going to grow as a person. You know, there, there has to be like that, that, uh, um, that ability to handle more. Mm -hmm. And if you're always running away from the challenge, that's part of being an entrepreneur is, is overcoming the challenges. There's only five things you'll ever do. Yeah. Find people, yeah. talk to people, put them in a the pipeline, yeah. follow up. Yeah. And then it's either yes or no. Yeah. That's it. It's whether it's online or offline, it doesn't yeah. matter. And most people try to complicate it. Yeah. In some format, I did. Yeah, I, I don't know. For three or four years, we had the most complicated. It looked like a roadmap. This is what yeah. you do, and you go here. It's just conversation. I have yeah. one of the things that that we developed was our own training system, and it's very simple. But it was based on conversation. Yeah. And every I've said this a thousand times. Even had a CD. All business is conversation. Yeah. Yeah. That's it. And when I came out with that CD and I don't know, whenever it was, uh, it, it changed how people perceived it. Just yeah. like we're talking here. Yeah. And if people understand they have all of the skill set giftings they need because they've held probably tens of thousands of conversations yeah. by now, that's all it is. Yeah. You have to learn though on the internet with yeah. respect, yeah. uh, social media. Mm -hmm. online marketing. You have to learn how to do mobile marketing. Yeah. You have to learn how to do all this thing, video marketing, Yeah, but it's just conversation. That's, that's all it is. And if you keep it just down to that place where it's just conversation, no matter online or offline, and I'm here to help. Yeah. Those were the two sides of the coin that we, we taught. Yeah. We called it the success coin. First side was, it's just conversation. Yeah. Just keep it that simple. Flip it over. I'm here to help. Yeah. You know, and that's, that's ultimately too, when you get right down to it, like as much as I love internet marketing, one of the things I'm always telling mm -hmm. my students is the fundamentals will never change. Mm -hmm. Those are as sure as what, it, you know, as anything, the means of communication might like, mm -hmm. you know, a new social media app comes out and maybe you start using that, but you're still dealing with humans. There's still basic fundamentals that will never change. That's why I always tell people, like, if you really want to be good with people, go read uh, Dale Carnegie, How mm -hmm. to Win Friends and Influence People. One of the best books ever written. In my opinion. A great book. When, when you're dealing with, when, and you're dealing and trying to 
you know, work with people because it still comes down to people. If you're sending an email, you're writing a social post, it still comes down to people. It's just, that's, that's the key. Many people think that this, this actually is, well, to Jody and me, this, this is almost a ministry. Because yeah. What we like to do is we like to not only encourage and empower people, which so many great people out there that do that, but at the same point, you have to bring it down to what's your real purpose for doing it. Yeah. It can't be just the money. Yeah. I know a lot of people that made a lot of money in this profession, but they still don't have that purpose down. Yeah. And they're still discontented. Yeah. And that's one of the reasons why that some people say you got to have a why. Yeah. I think it, it, it's got to run a little bit deeper than that. What is the foundational purpose yeah. that you're actually doing this and will get you through the tough time? Because invariably, Mark, they're going to come. Yeah. Very few people I've ever met. And, and I'm thinking right now of all the, all the people that I've been blessed to work with. All of them said the same thing. You know, what got me through the tough times was my purpose. Yes. And, and as trite as that sounds, yeah. something's got to get you up in the morning after you've gotten 30 no's in a, in a week. Yeah. You know what I mean? You got to have that. Yeah. Cause that, and that's the key. That's, I, I like to think of that as like the rod and the concrete mm -hmm. cause the concrete is strong, but it's not as strong without the rod. It doesn't have the, the steel rods in it. It's I'm working on a book called iron to steel. Yeah. And it talks about how iron is what process it goes through yeah. in order to hit to become steel, which is, yeah. you know, a hundred times stronger than iron. And that's where the process comes in. Yeah. I, I, I've, people I've coached have always said, if you haven't wanted to quit at least once this week, you're not, you're doing something wrong. Yeah. I feel like that weekly almost. You got to push yourself. Yeah. You've got to push you beyond the boundaries other people have set on you. You've got to push yourself beyond the boundaries and the limits that you have up here and here. Yeah. And what you have to do is you've got to understand that the only way you're going to get what you want out of life is to give what life demands. Yeah. And it demands everything you have. And it's always God, family, business. Yeah. Always. Yeah. But when you're working your business, you've got to give it everything you got. Cause if you don't, then you're only going to be living on minimals. Yeah. And you're only going to be, be establishing minimums for your business. Yeah. If, if you want to get to that maximum place, you've got to say, I'm tired. Yes, I understand. I, I can't go another step, but I'm going to suck it up. I'm going to pull it up and I'm going to keep going. That artificial intelligence, yeah. I've got a saying, social media to a large degree made people lazy. Yeah. Artificial intelligence is going to make people comatose. And the reason why is because they're depending on technology and yes. software to develop their business, yep. but they don't develop themselves. Yeah. That's why if you're doing AI, which I'm all for, Jody and I use it. But if you're doing AI, you need to get into the readership and the podcast that's going to grow you, not just your business. So I'm so glad you bring this up because I have been screaming this since day one because I, AI is obviously a hot topic right now. There's tools, oh, yeah. new tools coming out every, every day. hour, yeah. pretty <laughs> much. I mean, I've tried a gazillion of them. But one of the things I keep telling them is like, look, AI is awesome. It's great. There's so many things. Like I love sitting down at Chad GPT and using it as a brainstorm tool. Mm -hmm. It's helped me so many times. But I said, the people that are going to win in the age of AI are the mm -hmm. ones that master the relationship. Mm -hmm. The ones that master working with people and connecting with people because the masses are, and especially in the marketing world and things, they're going down the lazy route. They're going down the lazy route, like mm -hmm. you said. And, but it's the people that really make the connection with individuals, it's going to matter. It's all, that's always what. It's well, if you look at the word relationship as being able to relate to you. Yeah. And this is the thing I, that great leaders do. I've worked at the high, I'm so blessed. So accessible. Thank you, Lord. I've worked at the highest level from CEO to business owner to, to boards. Yeah. Uh, and the great leaders, and I've learned this, the great leaders that I have been blessed to work with all focus on the relationship first, yeah. the distributorship second. Yeah. And this is why the great leaders, when they're in an organization and they're, and they're talking to the team and stuff, they can't, they can't just focus on go build your distributorship. Yeah. What you have to do is you have to work with your leaders to build a relationship, which in turn will ignite a fire to go build that relationship. Yeah. Of course, you got to teach them what to do. Yeah. There's no doubt about it. Many people, and, and we've heard this before, but many people want to become efficient. 
Oh man, I do things right. Yeah, baby. I know how to prospect. Ooh, I know how to bring them in, but it's not about efficiency. It's about effectiveness. Yeah. That's doing the right things. Yeah. And that's one of the biggest reasons why the people have a tendency to struggle because they get really, really, really good at the things that are comfortable doing. Yeah. Wealth lies in the things that are uncomfortable and you have to grow into them. Yeah. That's where wealth lies. You're yeah. willing to put up with the uncomfortableness until it gets to the point where it doesn't feel uncomfortable. Anymore. Yeah. You're so you just, you're there. It, it's the same thing with video marketing. You know, when I talk to people, they're like, oh, I'm so scared to get on video or I'm really nervous. And I'm like, once you get into a groove, mm -hmm. when you break through that in initial thing, and I, I talk about this a lot, I have this little plan I've coined called the 555 plan. Mm -hmm. And it's just about creating a group of five videos, one minute videos that break the inertia. Then you have five where you're actually posting them, getting used to posting them. And then you have another five where you're doing some live videos. And by the time they've done this, little plan at the end they're like this was nothing like this this was so much easier than i thought i love that but now they've grown through that mm -hmm. of experiencing you know breaking through that limitation or limiting wow. of getting on that's video. so good you know and, and so and that happens with anything like it doesn't matter what you're doing um there's that's the way to break through it but i want to i want to shift onto another topic sure because um this is one of the key reasons you and i really connected. And I think the first time you and I met, I want to say it was 2015, 2016. MLSP. Yeah, we were at an MLSP yeah. event. You were a speaker, I was a speaker. And you and I connected in the lobby and we sat there for about two and a half hours. Easily. Yeah. You remember what we talked about? One word, Jesus. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> we sat yeah. there and talked about God for, you know, for two and a half hours. Mm -hmm. And it was like everything shut around down around us and we just had a great conversation. So I want to talk about faith because that is a huge part. That's what's connected us. And boy, we get together, we can just talk about Jesus. Last night at dinner, we all had a great time, you know, um, mm -hmm. you know, really enjoying talking about it. How, how important and what role has that played in your, Everything. In your business? Yeah. I was sitting out in Louisville, Kentucky in the backyard one afternoon, 1996, five, six. And just as I'm talking to you in my spirit, yeah. the Lord said, don't ever touch my glory. And I had no idea that I was, was going to become an author. I had no idea that I was going to do and have the, the success that God has blessed you. With. I had no idea. But that's what he said. Do never touch my glory. And the reason why is because I think that when people have a tendency to get really, and I see it so much on social media, it's all about me, 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 me. Yeah. That's one of the things I, I really wish they would name social media, social media. Because they take the me out of it, put the you, yeah. you know, the person. But it's everything, Mark. Uh, and, and that's one of the reasons why I think that faith in Jesus is probably one of the most critical things that, that will get you through the tough times. Yeah. Uh, when I started writing the, the, the series Legend, I'd never written a book before. I'd written a couple of training manuals, but I'd never written a book. I yeah. didn't even know how to write a book. But the Lord put in my heart to write this, this series of books. And it was so profoundly done that we've dedicated the whole series just to the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Love it. That's it. No other dedication. All books. And as a matter of fact, it says any book in the future that I write. Yeah. The reason why is because he's the one that not only deserves credit, yeah. deserves the glory, but at the same point, I didn't write it. How can you write seven books in eight weeks? I, that, when you were telling us that last night, I was like, oh my gosh, like that's amazing. But it's, you know, it's Jesus. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And I tell the word for it. Uh, yeah. It was so funny is sometimes people will, will, will put out books and you can tell it's AI. Yeah. I mean, as soon as I start reading it all, this is AI. Even if they go through the things they're trying to make it sound human. Yeah. And this is one of the reasons why that, that literally Jody just was so, she was like, because I never left the couch. Yeah. For seven weeks, I've just typed. And this is one of the reasons why that 
even though these books will be out in the very near future, yeah. it's not me. I didn't want to put my, my name on it, yeah. but I have to. I didn't want to do this video, but I have to. Yeah. You understand? Yeah. And I, um, you know, and I, and I think this is, you know, I'd love to hear your answer on this question because a lot of, especially faith-based entrepreneurs, they want to know, like, how can I make God my CEO? How can I hear God more? How can I make sure that I'm number one in my purpose that he has for me? Mm -hmm. And also how can I listen to him when he's putting me, you know, when he's, you know, sending me in a, in a direction and how can I know that it's him? I know mm -hmm. it's a deep question, mm -hmm. but I'd love to know your thoughts on that because I know you've been a man of faith for many years. I have been too. And I've learned how to hear from God, but I'm just curious, you know, what would you say to somebody that really wants to hear from God more? When God starts talking to you, it's more, at least this has been my experience. Yeah. When God first starts talking to you, it's more of an unction, a feeling. It's just, you know. And uh, yesterday, for instance, we talked about it last night, Jody and I were, were getting something to eat and there was this homeless guy. And I just looked at him and, and I had no intention of saying anything to him. Mm. But the Lord just moved me. So we gave him a little bit of money. Well, some money, good amount of money. And uh, for no reason at all. And the reason why I'm saying this is because it's unction. Yeah. And so if somebody really, truly wants to know how that God's talking with them, it's a feeling that you just know that it's not you. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. I, I know for me too, and I, there's so many times where I'm kind of in, maybe in a space where I'm calm or whatever, and mm -hmm. I know God tells me something mm -hmm. because I feel almost like this little electric shock starts mm -hmm. in my head and goes right down through my body. And it just is, and I feel this impression on my heart. I'm like, wow, that's mm -hmm. God saying something. And I, and it, I, it's happened to me so many times. It doesn't always happen like that. And sometimes it's just a little thought that I have or mm -hmm. something. Mm -hmm. Um, but I go back to where God says in the Bible, where he says, be still and know that I'm God. But the key was be still. And I, you know, that, I think that's a big one. I'm sure. If people will just get into the word every morning, I do. Yeah. You know, I, if I got my phone. First thing I do is I pull up the Gmail <laughs> and, and there's a series of emails that are sent out that I, that I'm subscribed to. Yeah that have scripture and, and teachings. And every morning, if they just get into the word, Jody and I listen to praise and worship music almost 24 yeah. seven, constantly all day long. Yeah. It may be low, yeah. but it's feeding the soul and the yeah. spirit. Even subconsciously, you're just hearing it in the background, mm -hmm. you know, and it's constantly Correct. feeding you. Yeah, I love that because um, that's a very important part I wanted to make sure I bring up because your success ultimately leads back to one reason. Mm -hmm. ultimately and you're not shy to tell it and I, that's what i love about it because real true success that is lasting i believe is always going to have god involved in some way amen you know amen and um so i that's i just love that man but um you know with your uh so i, I do want to talk about your book which you have a series of books oh yeah yeah um i did start going through your legend book the legend book which i think is awesome and uh, so let's talk about that a little bit. And what was kind of your inspiration for the God night? thing? Yeah, another God thing. Yeah. Jody and I, we uh, were blessed to live on the beach. Yeah. And we were, I was one during the pandemic. Yeah. You know, like I looked across the way the, on the other side of the condo, nothing, no movement, nothing, no cars. I mean, it was weird. Yeah. So I was looking out at the ocean and I was just like, what do I do, Lord? And just as solid as you're hearing my voice now, he said, legend. That's all he said. And I'm like, what's that? Had not a clue. No, I'd studied legends for years and years and years. Baseball, football, basketball, yeah. acting, singing legends, songwriting legends. I just studied them just because I thought it was, maybe I could learn something. Yeah. And about a week later, uh, I was sitting there and, and I got my computer out. And the next thing you know, my hand started typing and didn't quit for seven weeks. 
Wow. And each book is about 225 pages, 250. It's, it's they're not yeah. small books. Yeah. They're not little. Yeah. And each one is a particular topic, Mark, as you well know, you and I are going to do yeah. one called video. Yeah. Uh, the first one is called legend. And my wife came up with this brilliant idea, brilliant as she is. You do you have a wife like me, much smarter than me? Yeah, yeah. My wife, she's <laughs> like she came up. She said, "Hey, Doug, I got a good idea." And anytime my wife says, "I got a good idea," I'm all ears. When my wife speaks, I listen always. And so she said, "What? What if you got this book called Legend? What if you took and interviewed legends in the profession?" And I know a lot of people. And I said, "What a great idea!" So I started calling people and saying, hey, look, I've, I've written this book. And this was two, two and a half years ago. Yeah. Because it was a three-year project. Yeah. And I started to interview them. And, and what I learned from the interviews was staggering. Because yeah. it's not just their story. It's, you know, what, what do you see yeah. when you struggle? How did you get through it? What were you yeah. thinking? I mean, it was, it was in-depth yeah. stuff. And uh, the legends themselves, I think, is going to add us just, it's like sizzle to a steak. Have you ever been at a steakhouse, oh, a really yeah. nice one where the, the, it just walks by and you hear the yeah. sizzle? Yeah, oh yeah. The sizzle to a steak. And Mark, I'm telling you, anybody can be a legend. Yeah. I don't care who you are. Yeah. And there's, in the, the first book, and we'll just focus on that right now. In the first book, Mark, there's seven steps that I discovered that every legend takes, no matter whether it's real estate, insurance, acting, music, sports, athletics, doesn't matter. There's seven steps that every single legend takes in some version yeah. to get to where they, they want to go. This is what I, I discovered after years of studying them. So I called a couple of, well, actually about four or five number one earners. I just asked him, say, I'm going to send you something and, and tell me if this is sort of what, how you did what you've done. Yeah. And all of them said the same thing in some version. So this is the reason why that I think, and again, I give God all the credit, yeah, all the glory. It's his book. Yeah. Uh, if somebody is wondering how that they can, I'll go there. Yeah. Our, our profession has this, what I call culture of underperformance. Yeah. And they operate a lot on minimums, not maximums. Yeah. And this book will transform how you think. You know who Lisa Grossman is? Oh, yeah. Love Lisa that. said that legend will do to direct sales what Think and Grow Rich did to business. Yeah. It will increase, expand, enlarge, and force you to think in a way that you never have before, yeah. and then teach you how to take that thought process and then go through the seven steps. Very simple, mm. but this just not taught. Yeah. There's never been a book out like this. I, I, uh, what I'm so excited about with the book is that, and, and you know, in the more that I've gone in my career and, you know, doing the things that I do. Mm -hmm. And I have just, over the years, you, you learn that the real success is not in the strategy. Mm -hmm. The strategy might be the means, but it's the, the, the way you think, the attitude, and the, and the way you approach the strategy is everything. I'm and, gonna and it's, I think they, they, you know, I've heard it said before, it's 80% mindset, 20% strategy. It might even be more than that. It's also heart set. Yeah. In the book Legend, we, we go through heart fire. And heart fire is a term that we came up with to really get people to understand what drives even the mindset. Yeah. Because the mindset has to have something driving it and, and, and pouring into it, an emotional, uh, emotional machine, if you yeah. will. And this is how that is explained in the book, how heart fire connects to the mindset, which connects to the action, which yeah. connects to the result. And when people look at it, and we've talked about this, because yeah. this is how you operate. Yeah. Heart fire is so focused on, it. some people call it a burning desire yeah. you know, and think of grow rich. The reason why we call it heart fire is because it really has to burn in you. You have to have what I call a desperate hunger as, as we yeah. talk about in legend. Yeah. A desperate hunger is something you're so hungry for, an achievement, a role, a rank, whatever it is, that you're desperate for. Yeah. Not in a bad way. You're right. But in a good way. And that's one of the reasons why that you've been so successful as a video marketer and as a trainer, coach, and all this other. Because you have a desperate hunger to help people succeed. So do I. Yeah. 
And if people just zero in on a bullseye with that, I'm telling you, you're the moment that you move from, I got to build a business or I got to build a team to, I got to help a ton of people. Yeah. Everything shifts. You know, while you're saying that I had this thought and it goes right back to that heart fire. Mm -hmm. It's fueled by the purpose. Amen. So like when Amen. you're, when you know your purpose and you know what your mission is, the mm -hmm. mission God gave you mm -hmm. to get out there and do, it lights you up. It fires you up in everything. And that's got to be like, again, the rod and the concrete. In the book, the, the good book, the Bible, it says Jesus set his face like a flint. Mm. Now, if you study, I study Aramaic. And when you yeah. study what that means, what that means is, is that he was one focus, resolute, nothing else mattered. Mm. Yeah. And this is why that if Christ is going to be our role model, then we have to set our face like a flint yeah. to where we're going, what we want to accomplish, and nothing can stop it. I call it the rule of no poke, N O P O, rule of no poke. No other possible outcome. Yeah. The only outcome possible, and that's with Christ, the only outcome possible was cross. Yeah. I'm going to start preaching here. <laughs> <laughs> I'd love it, man. I would totally love it. Yeah. It's, uh, I, I love diving into this because you really, really, and this is what I'm so excited about with the, the legend book and the whole series really is that it's going to really set the mindset that people need to have to succeed in whatever, whether it's direct sales, network marketing, mm -hmm. you know, affiliate marketing, online marketing, whatever your niche is, mm -hmm. it's going to help. And that's why I have such a, a love for network marketing because it has and even though, you know, my focus has been internet marketing, I love network marketing because it really taught me the importance of number one, working well with people, mm -hmm. connecting with people, but also I've heard it said before, it's a personal development with a pay plan, you know? I love that. And I, and I've always loved that saying because it, you, you, the more you grow, uh, the more you're, you know. I've got a friend, his name is Steve, and he's executive VP for a company, which is going to be promoting the book. And uh, as a matter of fact, they're really going to solidly get behind it. And I'm very thankful for that. And I sent him the book, just, you know, just PDF. And he called me and he says, I just read the introduction. And he says, I couldn't sleep that night. <laughs> just the introduction. Because there's an anointing. Yeah. All the books carrying an anointing yeah. and, and, and Jody and, and my prayer is that this would be a blessing to people, not only because of business, yeah, but because the reality of, of really seeing what's possible in their life versus what they told was possible. Am I making sense? Yeah. hundred percent. Yeah. I, it, well, the thing is too, is that when you really awaken that purpose and you get centered on that heart fire. Mm -hmm. Imagine the things God can drop on you to help you accomplish that, you know, and when God, God starts giving you the, the steps, you know, that, that really just takes it in a whole nother stratosphere. You know? Everything we've ever needed dealing in this project, the legend project, and we've got, we're going to be launching a publishing company called Millionaire Publishing along with it. We've got a lot of other books we're going to be coming out with that aren't necessarily specific to network marketing. Some are yeah. faith-based, yeah. Uh, some are business-based, some are, are, are various other things. But everything that we needed for this project, no exception, God provided. Yeah. We didn't know how to do something. Oh, I do. We didn't know how to open up that door. Somebody, oh, I know him. Yeah. We didn't have a place for what necessarily the type of shipping and, and printing and everything we wanted, a very yeah. specific. Suddenly, it's there it is every single thing. And when you walk with the Lord and when you really truly are with him in a way that you know that he's your business partner, yeah. he's a business partner. It's out of this world. What he can do, Mark, is unbelievable within a second. I, uh, I, I, we were telling you this last night we were out, but I've been going through the book Wild at Heart by John. Great John book. Incredible book. Yeah. Uh, every man out there, you need to get that great book. book. Every woman needs to get that book to understand their man. And every man needs to get captivating book, which that's my next book to read, uh, to understand, you know, women. Um, 
the heart of a woman. Um, but I will tell you, one of the things that he put in there, and you made me think of it based on what you were just saying, is how God provided every step of the way. He said in this book, he said, the moment you ask how, you're stepping out of faith. Oh, absolutely. And I thought, holy moly, how often in my life I've been like, how is this going to happen? You immediately start doubting. If, like if God gives you something. I still do that. Oh, we, oh yeah, absolutely. How? <laughs> how? And, and, and it's and it's not, it's like, you know, you go back and you look at the Bible and look at uh, Moses. When, mm -hmm. when God told Moses he was going to go into Egypt and, and yep. set his people free, immediately Moses goes into, nope, can't happen. Can't do that. He starts giving all the reasons. It can't happen. Mm -hmm. And we, we all struggle with that too, you know, but I, I think if that's one of the examples from all of the, the records in the Bible of how people even struggled believing God, but God still did amazing things through them. But amazing. I think there's so much to learn from that. Like we don't necessarily always need to know how it's going to happen. If God gives you something. His ways are not our ways. His thoughts are not our thoughts and how he does things. Shoot, we can't even comprehend how he does some things. I'm yeah. just like, what? Well, how'd that happen? Right. I, that's, I'm, I'm, as I get older, I'm 51, mm -hmm. you know, and the older I get, I was telling Jody earlier, you know, uh, if I, if I could go back to being 20 with all the knowledge that I have now, mm -hmm. it would be a whole different ball game because the truth is like, I've, I've learned to more and more embrace the idea of, I don't need to know everything because, but I know the one who does. That's one of the things I love studying billionaires. Yeah. I love studying billionaires. I don't know why. I just like to just, how do they think? Yeah. And, um, there's a lot of, a lot of them out there today. Um, but the, but Richard Branson has a saying. Yeah. How does it matter when the why is on fire? Yeah. And he says, you will figure it out. You know, he said, I'd never done this before. I was going to buy a company. I had no knowledge of the company, but he went ahead and bought it. Yeah. And the next thing you know, boom, he, he, he figured it out. He got the right people in. Yeah. I don't, you know, I don't know Richard faith, but I know one thing he, he's got a brain. Yeah. And this is one of the reasons why I think that in, in looking at it from my standpoint, your standpoint, anybody can succeed in this world. Yeah. I don't care how, what your, what your education level is, what your intelligence level is. Yeah. Anybody can create success in their life, in their work. Yeah. All you have to do is decide, put an effective plan together, create effective actions, and then just make that the only possible outcome because nothing else matters. And then your subconscious will kick in. Yeah. There's so much depth and power to that. I mean, it's simple. Uh, it's, it's simple. You know, I, I think the biggest thing too is people don't realize how simple a lot of this stuff is. The hard part is the growth that you got to go through. You said Pushing something about fears. You, know? you said something about strategy earlier. Yeah. And, and, and years ago, I, one of the things I taught, if your business is nothing but strategy, it's going to end up a tragedy. Yeah. And I think that in looking at from what you're talking about, let's take it step one, step two, step three, yeah. step four, which you teach, yeah. teach in video marketing. We live life in C. Yeah. We think Monday, Tuesday, yeah. Wednesday, January, February, March. Yeah. We live life in sequence. Yeah. And many times people don't understand that you have to work this business. You have to do life in sequence. Mm -hmm. But as you move into the next sequence, the next day, the next hour, you have to understand that if you are living the pattern of how we live life, then you already know how to succeed. Yeah. We have a tendency to get off track on that and, and, and yeah. think that success is something else. No, it's not. It's yeah. doing what you do best, which is living life in sequence and then succeeding in sequence, doing certain things that most people aren't willing to do. Yeah. That has always rung true to me. Like I've, and I've, you know, I've heard this and it's a common saying around network marketing too, is that you know, be willing, uh, be willing to do the things that most are unwilling to do. Mm -hmm you know, to get to where you want to go. Be uncompromised. Yeah. This is the thing that a lot of people are. They have compromised their dreams. They've compromised their income. They've compromised their future. They've compromised their destiny. And they've also compromised what they really, 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 yeah. really want to do with their life. Yeah. Because somebody else told them that it wasn't possible. Yeah. Mark, anything's possible. Yeah. Let me see. I can do all 
things. I think the Apostle Paul wrote. Yeah, I, I I'm thinking because you know we Wani and I, my wife Wani, we we've been really again into John Eldridge and mm -hmm. and uh, watching a video recently, and he was talking about you know the movie Gladiator. Oh yeah, and he showed this clip, the clip where you know Maximus wins the fight, and mm -hmm. the emperor comes down, and mm -hmm. he's so happy, and and you know he's got. And Maximus has the mask on mm -hmm. and he can't see who it is. And um, anyway, they're talking and uh, he, Maximus turns his back on him. And and uh, the emperor says, how dare you turn your back on me? Mm -hmm. Identify yourself. And there's that moment where he takes the helmet off and he turns around and the look in his eye. Russell Crowe did an amazing job. I love that scene. And the look on his eye and he says, I'm uh, the um, husband to a murdered wife, a father to a mur murdered uh, son. And, and he just, it's so powerful because you can feel the identity mm -hmm. that he has. It is so much a part of him. And in Love anything that. you're successful with, it all comes back to that. And this is where, like, even on video, that clip is so perfect because it's not the strategy. <laughs> Most people get tied up in, oh, what kind of title should I have? And what is this and what is that? But it's how you show up. And if you show up with that kind of attitude in anything that you do, people feel it. And it's when you're sure, when you have purpose, people feel it. So that made me think of that. We don't have time to get into it today, but that's why identity theft is so prevalent today yeah. and, and, and titles and, and various other things of homes and yeah. identity theft of check, checking accounts, all that other stuff. And sometimes we have our own identity, such as what you're talking about, yeah. stolen as well. And yeah. we operate in a much lesser capacity than we should yeah. in life. It's huge. Identity means everything, you know. That's why, you know, we, we, I know you and I, we go right back to faith. Because when it gets right down to it, who am I? And when I know what I am, not what I think I am, mm -hmm. but when you really understand how, what God says you are, it's not about what I think I am. It's what does God say I am? Mm -hmm. And once you really identify that and you walk in that, oh man, you're unstoppable. You can be, you're unstoppable. The things of the world don't get you down. Well, you know? he told Adam, go take dominion. Yeah. What part of that don't you understand? Dominion to dominate. Yeah. Okay. I'm all over that. That's why, the, that's why when you're in the flow of what you do in direct sales, network marketing, online yeah. marketing, social media marketing, it doesn't matter when you're in that yeah. flow, it, it becomes easy. You know what prosper means in, 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 in a certain word? In, if you look really, really down the word prosper, yeah, it means flow, F-L-O-W. And that is in, in the ancient Aramaic. And when you look at the word flow, it's like the I, flow from heaven. I immediately thought of a hose and our foot being on the hose. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's what prosper means. One of the, one of the, what you call the root words, yeah. one of the root uh, definitions of it. Yeah. Flow. Yeah. What part of that don't we understand? Yeah. So good. So good. Um, I wanted to, uh, also, you know, um, bring it back here to, to business where I, you know, I've gone, haven't fully gone through the book, but one of the things that you did talk about, um, is the power of environment, mm -hmm. like the environment around you. Mm -hmm. And, um, that is just as important as us being tapped into and working on our own mindset and the things, but it, what also makes the most important thing is the people you surround yourself Amen. with. And so I'd love your thoughts on that a little bit, because I know for me, it's the people that I've surrounded myself with that have lifted up my way of thinking. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, early on in my career, listening to your stuff that you, you did help me so much and shifting my broke mindset to a different way of thinking, you know? Um, I have a saying, an environment either grows you or slows you. Yeah. I think it's in, that's in legend. It either grows you yeah. or slows you. And the people that surround you and the people that you listen to are training you. You may not understand it, but you're being trained every single day, either for mediocrity and average or something way beyond that. Yeah. 
And you have to be careful what you listen to, who you talk with, who you hang out with. And some people say, yeah, but they're my friends. Great. Yeah. What are they doing to your future? Yeah. I hate to say that, but it's, it's just the way it is. It is. It absolutely is. And when I got involved in direct sales, I was made fun of. My, my, some of my friends just laughed and said, you're going to jail and all this other stuff. They're not laughing today. I had one guy come up to me in a mall back in 2000 something. And I was, I was visiting my daughter and he, he just said, can I talk to you for a minute? I said, Hey man, what's going on? We chatted for a minute. He says, I want to apologize to you. He says, I was a real blah, blah, blah at the beginning of your business. And he says, I just want you to know I apologize. He says, I've, I've thought about this over the years. And he says, I was just, just not nice. And you have to understand that shit because whether it's real estate, insurance, whether it's anything else, Mark, what do you know about starting your own business? Why would you give up a paycheck? Yeah. We are not giving up a paycheck. You're multiplying a paycheck. Yeah. You have to look at it that way. Yeah. So this is the reason why that environment, in my opinion, and this is just a little word of the wise, you have to develop your own environment. You have to affect the environment when you go in and if yeah. there's negative thinking about it if there's negative talk or negative this yeah. you have to change it or you leave the environment yeah it's that simple yeah love your family love your friends and everything else but if they're not going to get you to where you want to go in life god bless you but i'm going to find people i can talk with and learn from yeah that can help me get to where i want to go in life and it has to be that black and white i heard i heard a saying one time and i've heard it many times but i love it and if you go into a room and you're the smartest person in the room, you're in the, you're wrong, in the room. wrong room. Amen. <laughs> you're in the wrong room. And, Amen. and I, I love getting around, you know, people that are smarter than me. Cause I want, I want to know, I want to know what goes on in their head. That's why I like to hang, hang out with you and Jody. Well, more Jody. I am more Jody. <laughs> <laughs> no, but that's what I, I love getting around people that uh, are big thinkers because it always shows me where I need to think bigger. We all have, you and I and Jody and Wani and everybody else, we all have the same problem. Yeah. Our God is too small. Yeah. I read that in a book one time and, 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 and I just nearly dropped the book because I'm like, wow, that's convicting. He is our God. Our God yeah. is too yeah. small. So this is why that our perception, perspective yeah. of what's possible is a direct reflection of how we view what's possible through God. Yeah. And this is the reason why that, that somebody asked me, how many books you're going to sell a legend? I said, 5 million. He says, what about the whole series? 40, 50 million. <laughs> how do you know? Yeah. I know what he's capable of. Yeah. And so this is the reason why you said we think too small. The only way to think is beyond what's comfortable. You need to stay in that level that when you talk about what you want to do with your life, people laugh. Yeah. And when people laugh, that's the sweet spot. You stay there. You don't move. It's incredible. It, it really is. I mean, the more we talk, the more I just start realizing, you know, even in this talk, you know, where God show me where I'm thinking small, you know, show me where, help me to get bigger, how to think bigger, how to let you in more. Cause it really is. I, I, I go back to that saying I heard in the book, as soon as you start asking how you're stepping out of faith. And that spoke to me so big because I am, I'm a how person too. I am too. Yeah. <laughs> I think we probably all are on some level, but for me, like, cause I'm, I'm like guy who loves to like, you know, have something, pick it all apart. Mm -hmm. take it all apart and then put it all back together mm -hmm. so that I understand the, how it works, you know, everything. And, you know, Amen. so, and I think it's a strength of mine, but it can also, your strength can also be a thing that hinders you if you let it. I really appreciate, uh, not only you taking the time for this, but I've been under the radar for eight years, nine years, 10 years, I don't know, just coaching and doing a lot of different things. Yeah. And when, when you step back out or, or, or whatever you want to call it in the yeah. step by step by step by step, it, it's uncomfortable. Yeah. And, and I told you yesterday and last night, this is totally uncomfortable for me. It really is. Yeah. I would much rather be interviewing you, <laughs> but I want to thank you and Wani yeah. for not only allowing Jody and me to, to be a part of yeah. this, 
<laughs> but more importantly, I think that if people just go through this again, yeah, there's a lot of nuggets in there from you and hopefully from me that not only will help them, but I, I do want to leave, leave a nugget that hopefully will, will really help people. You have to be deaf. Yeah. D-E-A-F. Don't even acknowledge their fear. Mm. Most people don't leave faith-based lives. They leave fear-based lives. Yeah. And because of that fear, they want other people not to get ahead of them because then it'll prove that they're losers in their own mind, which they aren't. Right. And this is the reason why that we have to be carriers of the fire, as I call yeah. it. And you have to light people up when you get around them with how good they are, what they can do, be encouragement. Mm -hmm. I'm talking, just light them up. Right. And the reason why is because if you've got a team or you're talking to a prospect, if, if I was going to recruit you, I'd say, Mark, I don't know if anybody's ever told you this or not. <laughs> Your communication skills are amazing. This may or may not be for you. I don't know. Yeah. But man, whatever you decide to do in life, your communication skills are going to knock it out of the park. Yeah. And when you do this online or offline, direct message, Zoom or whatever, now you're in that place that you're carrying a fire and you're spreading it to that person to show them you have talent, you have gifts, you have skills. Let's see what we can do with them. That's the secret to recruiting. Yeah. I keep coming back to identity. Identity, identity and purpose fuels everything. Fuels Amen. People. I love it. Well, as we, you know, get ready to wrap this up, I want, I did have a question I wanted mm -hmm. to ask you because the legend book, mm -hmm. you know, I know it's uh, coming soon or it's there. It'll be, it'll be, by the time people see this, it'll probably be out more than likely. Yeah. And uh, I, I thought this was a good question. Like, you know, What's the one message of hope that people are looking at? I mean, right now, I mean, you know, obviously it doesn't take much to look around. It's, the world's a nutbag. The, wor the world's crazy, you know? And I think people are looking for some hope today. You know, they want, they want some, uh, uh, that's why I love Sylvester Stallone, greatest actor ever. You won't change my mind on that. But I, I love, that's why I'm such a huge fan of Rocky mm -hmm. because it's such a message. Series. Yeah. It's such a message of like, you know, the little guy, you know, overcoming. And I, I, for me, that just, you know, speaks so much to me, but people are looking for hope. They, I mean, just even if it, the hope is in their own lives, you know, what, Amen. you know, um, how, how do you think the, the legend book can really help them to get that hope? Because I think that, um, Everybody's looking for that. Um, that's a great question, Mark. And I think in a single sentence, it will help introduce them to the real you. Yeah. Everybody's looking for a better life. I think you would agree with that. Oh, yeah. Everybody's looking for some kind of a better life, but they don't know how to get there. They don't, and the, and, and it's, it's a very simple process, but it starts with, again with with that desperate hunger and you turn that into a decision because yeah. you have to decide this is going to happen. Then you turn it into an effective blueprint. How do we get there? What's the map? Right. And then you have to turn it into a determined path that absolutely nothing can stop. Yeah. I mean, I get the legends in the book, uh, that we interviewed, everybody said the same thing. Sometimes I just wanted to quit. Yeah. But you can't. And eventually when you hit that destination, cause that's all of that vision yeah. is, it's, it, I speak about a whole chapter about vision and destination. It's all it is. It's a destination where you want to go in life and take people. Yeah. That has to be understood that it's called the rule of ATAP. All things are possible. You just have to live by that versus hear it. Yeah. Making sense. Oh, a hundred percent. You know, I, I always, I love movies cause they always give you the, the mind picture. But when I, when I, think of you have to keep going mm -hmm. even when you want to quit like and it seems like all the odds are against you i think of terminator 2 at the end of terminator oh, yeah. 2 yeah you know when he's arnold's going after the mm -hmm. you know the, he's now the good terminator and mm -hmm. he's going after the bad Terminator. at the end <laughs> he's missing his legs mm -hmm. one of his arms and he just will not stop pursuing yep. the terminator and he's grabbing thing pulling himself forward and he's going it's like just he cannot quit even though his arms are missing and everything, it's like, 
And I, I feel like that's the way we got to be in whatever we're, you know, in this life, like that's kind of a representation of, of what we do. And, and if we want success in something, that's really how you got to go after it. Somebody you told me get this one down, but you're going to get back up. Somebody told me this one time, Mark, that blew me away. He says, Douglas, the secret is getting rid of the quit. Yeah. I said, what do you mean? Quit can't be in you. Yeah. You got to get rid of the quit. He says, the moment you get rid of the quit, anything you have yeah. in front of you is achievable. Yeah. And I was like, wow, that's so good. I heard the quote. I forget his name. His name was Mike something. He was in, a, I forget which company he was in, or I think he was in uh, Legal Shield. Anyway, he, I heard this quote, Mike Humes, that's his name. And he said, uh, success is inevitable for the man or woman who will not quit. Amen. And uh, that's always stuck with me for years uh, because that's really it. If you won't quit, eventually you're going to get there. And I've heard it said too, well, how long is it going to take? And I heard uh, this is the perfect answer. Why does it matter? Time's going to pass anyway. People work so, for five years, 10 years, and in 10 years, they maybe have a 20% pay increase. Yeah. With your own business, you could have a 2,000, 200,000% 200, pay increase. Yeah. And there's nothing wrong with jobs, and, and, and it, I ha I've had them, and it helped pay bills and everything else. Yeah. But there comes a point where you have to, even if you love your job, never want to leave it. Yeah. If you have that extra additional just $1,000 coming in, that yeah. can be life-changing for 90% of the people that that will be that will be looking at any type of home business yeah 100 percent. well this has been awesome thank you for having me yeah this is honored awesome. to be here i love it i'm so happy we did this and i know there's some nuggets in here that are you know you know just probably change change some lives change mine for sure there's some great things you shared and i always love it so guys if you love what we shared here today make sure you comment on this video or podcast or wherever you're seeing this but uh, Doug, you're amazing, man. And um, we got to do this again. And if they want to get a copy of the book, yeah. legendbook.com. Legendbook.com. Legendbook Check it out. Get anything Doug talks about. And God bless you guys.